Let's learn about the PIC32's output compare peripheral. Output compare. And it's called output compare because the value on a timer, the count on a timer, is compared to some value that you set. And when those two are equal, a digital output is set to be high or to be low. And with that, you can create a single pulse or a continuous pulse train of specified uh, durations. Uh, the way that we're going to use it is to create pulse width modulation signals. Pulse width modulation, or PWM for short. PWM is what's used to control motors uh, by a microcontroller. So before getting into more details, let's take a look at a typical PWM waveform. So there's five output compares on the PIC32. They're labeled OC1 to OC5. So here we're looking at OCX, so X is equal to 1 to 5. And it's creating an output pulse train here that pulses from 0 volts up to 3.3. So let's call this 0 volts here. And 3.3 volts is the maximum voltage it reads. So it goes from 0 to 3.3 volts. And the transitions here are at time 1 and time 2. So every output compare is based on a timer. It's called timer Y. So timer Y for us has Y equal to 2. So we could be using timer 2, a 16-bit timer. We could be using timer 3. Or we could be using the 32-bit timer defined as timer 2-3. Okay. So this first event here at time 1 is when the timer rolls over. And we've already learned how to set up a timer to roll, after a roll over after a specific amount of time. So when that timer rolls over, then the output value of output compare x goes to 3.3 volts. Then it stays at that value until timer Y reaches the value OCXR, so OC1R, for example. And then it drops low, and it stays low again until the timer rolls over again. So that's how a, the, uh, the output compare module works. Uh, it uses one of the timers, either 2.3 or the 32-bit timer, two, timer 2.3. Two, uh, whenever that rolls over, it sets the digital output high. When, it, when the value reaches OCXR, it sets the output low, and it continues making a pulse train that way. And these pulses are typically fed to a motor amplifier to drive a motor, for example. So there's three basic function, special function registers that we use to control uh, OCX. So that is o, output compare X, X is 1 to 5, CON, so this is the control special function register. And this determines whether it's going to be a 32-bit timer that we use or one of the two 16-bit timers, timer 2-3. Which mode we're going to be using the output compare module in, and usually we'll be creating these PWM pulse trains. And also whether the fault pin is used. So the fault pin gives us a way to turn off the pulse width modulation if uh, some fault is perceived in the environment until the fault is clear. Typically, we won't use it. So this is one special function register. Another one that we use is OCXR. And OCXR determines when the signal goes from high to low. So when PWM, oops, sorry. When PWM drops low, and the last one is OCXRS. And this special function register has the value that we want OCR to change to on the next pulse train. So somewhere during here, if we want to update the, the width of the pulse, we write a value to OCXRS. And then the next time it triggers high, it will, the value of OCXRS gets loaded into OCXR. So this is the next update. So finally, when we talk about uh, pulse width modulation, we often talk about the duty cycle of the pulse train. 
And the duty cycle of a pulse train that looks like this is just the percentage of time that the signal is high. So that's equal to 100% times OCXR divided by the period register PRY plus 1. So why is the timer that we're, we're using? This is the period register value, and the duty cycle is just 100% times the OCXR over PRY plus 1. 